Hello aviators, welcome to my instrument rating video series. I'm Ty Jones, your error nerd, bringing you honest experience, reviews, training tips that will help you aviate, navigate, and communicate. Now, if you're new here, the purpose of this video series is to bring you free, in-depth instrument ground school training for you instrument pilots. This is the same exact training and instructions that I normally give to my students. And if you're one of my students that are watching, yes, you can use this as a review because this is literally the same exact instructions that I give in the same exact way. Um, and it has been proven to work. So without further ado, let's jump right into the training. Hey instrument pilots, welcome to session number 13. 13, this is Houston. We're going to be talking about the PAR approaches, ASR, LDAs, and SDFs in this mission today. Uh, I'm, I'm kidding. I love that movie. If anybody has not seen Apollo 13, you definitely guys. What pilot hasn't seen Apollo 13? Anyway, greatest movie ever. Anyway, um, on this episode, on this session, um, PA, as you can see, this is what we're going to be talking about. It's going to be very short, so not really much to talk about. I have all of the references here. So let's start from the top down. So PAR and ASR. What is precision approach radar? What is approach surveillance radar? So what that is, is services provided from the tower in case you have any kind of instrumentation failures that aren't, that is not allowing you to safely descend or allowing you to maintain the approach path of the final approach course. So what these are is you can ask, you can request, if the tower provides that service, you can request, hey, 777 Hotel Echo, I would like to request the precision approach radar service. So the tower will actually go on here and they will provide you the precision approach radar. The difference between precision approach radar and approach surveillance radar is precision approach, will, the, the control will be able to give you lateral and vertical guidance the approach surveillance radar will they'll only be able to provide you lateral guidance so just per, so just see this one as this one has your glide slope this one doesn't have a glide slope now what the tower sees on their radar screens is when they do this they have both the top the top down view of the aircraft and they also have a side view like a profile view so let's say here's our aircraft coming in so, and we're doing the, uh, the, the precision approach radar service. So this is what they're gonna see. They're gonna see your aircraft coming in, coming in, coming in. And they're gonna say, hey, Cessna 777 Hotel Echo, turn left 10 degrees. Okay, re-intercept the final approach course on this heading, blah, blah, blah. And then they'll literally guide you in from the top down view. On top of that, not only do they see the top down view, they also see the profile view right here so they can actually see you coming in, they can see the altitude that you're at and they can give you step down fixes or they can see your altitude. If you're getting a little too low, then they can ask you to climb, descend, do it all, do whatever they have to do. That's precision approach radar. Now, now approach surveillance radar is the same exact thing, except you don't have this right here. And actually, if you look on Daytona approaches, uh, Daytona beach approaches, uh, now, I'll, now and also, if you look on Daytona, oh, and also if you look on Daytona Beach Approach Place, you'll actually see in the notes you'll see a small little ASR. So they actually provide approach surveillance radar. So now the other thing about this is they have to have trained personnel available in the tower to be able to provide you that service. If they're not trained, uh, and they have to be trained every six months or so, I, I can't remember the exact uh, time they have to be trained, but if they're not trained, then they cannot provide the service and then you won't be able to have that service. Now that's precision approach radar and approach surveillance radar. Now, the guidance is for, for these two is gonna, you'll find it at 5411 on the 2020 AIM. And also, this the information is kind of scattered throughout the AIM as well. Uh, for example, you'll see the dimensions of the PAR uh, uh, systems of the PAR and the ASR, so it has a 20 degree azimuth and it goes out to 10 nautical miles. You can find that at 4-5-4. Now going to LA, uh, uh, LDA and simplified directional aid. So localizer directional aid and simplified directional facility are literally localizers that are offset from the runway. That's the, literally it. One may be a little bit more accurate than the other and it may have a glide slope which is localizer directional aid. And that's literally the difference between these two in a nutshell. Now, why would they be little off center? So here's our normal localizer in, in the ILS. So it's normally lined up with the, with the runway, normally set back a thousand feet back, and then there's a localizer frequency and it actually goes out. Now, 
the LDA and SDFs, their localizers antennas are normally off here, offset from the runway. Now, why would they be offset from the runway? Well, let's say we have a bunch of mountains right here, as you can see right here, and they really don't want you coming in over these mountains. So what they'll be doing is they'll have you come in a little offset here, and now when you have visual, when you bust out of the clouds, you'll just do a little side set maneuver, and then bam, you'll go ahead and land, and uh, everybody's safe, and mission is accomplished for Apollo 13. Okay, 13, this is Houston, and this is literally gonna be the last episode before the finale of this session. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this session so far. The next one and the last one is going to be um, IFR, uh, the IFR flight plan. So we're literally gonna be putting everything we've learned all, all throughout these 13 sessions and we're going to apply it and put it all in session 14. We're going to go from start to finish. I'm going to have a flight plan. We're going to go through the flight plan. We're, um, we're going to build one together. And we're asking going to fly the pl flight plan. And I'm also going to throw in some scenarios in there. Like, oh, let's, what happens if we have lost comms? What happens if we have to, do, uh, we have to fly uh, to an alternate? How do we calculate that? Do we do the fuel burn? All of that stuff we're going to go over the next and final session of this instrument ground school. It has been so fun filming this so far. It gives me more, more motivation to keep going and keep going and film other episodes. Thank you for all you guys' support. I really appreciate it. Thanks for sticking with me until the end. We got one more session to go. Again, if you have any questions, if you feel I missed out on anything, put them, go ahead and put them in the comments below. But until then, Keep flying, keep learning, and I'll see you guys in the last session on number 14. I'll see you guys next time.